understand the valuelessness of contemplating the form, the physical, the limited. Is there value in contemplating the limitless, or is that a mind trick? Mm -hmm. The infinite, mm -hmm. you know, the, mm -hmm. the self that uh, is subtracted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there, there is value in contemplation, period. Whatever you're contemplating, now contemplation, a yeah, contemplation, so contemplation is wandering, is looking without knowing, is sort of suspending your knowledge to sort of be open to what may reveal itself. So, in contemplating you, there is a presence, just your presence, but there are no conclusions, there's no pre preset conclusions in contemplation. So, contemplation is just a, a, an open questioning. Mm -hmm. So, the, the core contemplation is, of course, what, what is the reality of this, this world body mind. What is the reality? Where does the reality reside in my experience? Mm -hmm. Because you, you always go to your experience. Because if you don't go to your experience, the option is for you to go to hearsay or to go to what you imagine somebody else's experience is, or what you you believe the group experience is, which is mentation. But you can go directly to your experience and bear, denude your experience of the of the illusory until you come to the real, the subtraction. So you remove all your or you suspend all your conclusions, your learning about your experience, and you just come to the stillness and the purity of experience. And in doing so, you also suspend all beliefs and notions and images that you have about yourself. Suspended. You go to not knowing. You suspend all your ideas, beliefs, and conclusions and impressions about the world, the body, and the mind. You suspend them. So that you come barehanded. So contemplation is a barehandedness, is a barehanded openness, a mirror like openness. There is no direction in contemplation. Or if you want to use a direction, so the direction is the divine revelation. The divine revelation. So coming back to your question about the contemplation of the world, body, mind, or contemplative consciousness. When I talk about the world body mind and the warning or the the sharing is not to pursue your happiness or the freedom or the revelation of the divine in the world body mind. Because if you are going to seek God in an experience or in a situation or in an event or in an object or in a castle that you're going to buy or you're going to own or you're going to possess. That castle in a thousand years or five thousand years or fifty thousand years will be rubble. And your entire dream and, and happiness will be dissolved in rubble. If you place your happiness onto the health and the wealth of the body, 
that's only going to last 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120 years, and then it will be dust to dust. So it is not, the, the, the pointer is not, do not contemplate the world body-mind, is do not pursue in the world body-mind impression. What you are truly looking for is not there. So in contemplating consciousness, is contemplating consciousness also a dualistic thing where I am contemplating an object called consciousness? No, because by consciousness, we do not refer to an object. By consciousness, we refer to that that is real. And what is it that is real in our experience right now? We are not going to use anybody's definition about what is real or what the encyclopedia says about what is real. I'm going to look directly in my experience about what is real. And the reality that I come upon in my experience is the reality of consciousness the reality of awareness, the reality of presence, whatever word you use. So the contemplation of consciousness is actually going to consciousness and acknowledging that, yeah, I recognize you as real. I recognize that the, what is real in this experience right now and you have to do it for yourself. I cannot do it for you. And you cannot use my conclusion to be yours. You have to come to your own, your own clarity about it. That the reality of your experience right now is the reality of consciousness. You see? That's the contemplation. In a way, this contemplation can be spontaneous and instantaneous. You can come to it right away. Yes, I am completely clear that what is real in my experience right now is consciousness and not the image that I perceive. Because the image that I perceive, right now, you turn your head this way, it's a different image. You close your eyes, it's a different image. You go to deep sleep, images are gone. So it cannot be, the reality cannot be in what you're perceiving. It cannot be in the sensation, the bodily sensation. It cannot be in a thought. It is, it belongs to consciousness. That's the initial contemplation. The initial contemplation is the reality of my experience is the reality of consciousness. Once that is clear to you, then you can ask yourself, well, wait a minute. I'm also perceiving this perception. Okay, I'm very clear that the reality of this perception is consciousness. Well, what is this perception? What is the reality of that perception? It's a good question. To myself, I'm asking myself, what is the reality, the reality of this perception, of these trees, of this... this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I ask myself this question. Mm -hmm. Then I say, okay, where is this perception? Where is this perception? Is the perception out there? Am I perceiving something out there? Or am I perceiving my perception right here? In other words, is there any distance between the reality of awareness, the reality of consciousness, and the perception? What is the distance between I, meaning I as awareness, I as consciousness, and the perception? We've done it a few times. Is it five inches? Is it two inches? Is it one meter? Is it 20 meters? You ask yourself, you're contempl that's a contemplation. You're contemplating the, co the relationship of consciousness to this perception. And you will find, but again, you have to do it for your own, for yourself you will find that this perception that you, this perception is at zero distance mm -hmm. of consciousness. 
In other words, you're perceiving your perception, you as conscious perceiving your perception, and that perception is at zero distance of, from you. What is at zero distance? If two objects are at zero distance of each other, they're one and the same. Yep. So therefore, I as consciousness, which is the reality of this perception, and the reality of consciousness supersedes the reality of the perception because the perceptions can change. I look here, I see you. I look there, I see you. So the, re the reality of consciousness is the constant and the perception changes. And yet, the perception is at zero distance of consciousness, is made out of consciousness. So the reality of the world body mind is none other but consciousness. The reality of the world body mind is consciousness. The one A good example of that is in your night dream. In your night dream, when you're dreaming of a pink flying elephant, the pink flying elephant, the reality of the pink flying elephant is you, the dreamer, is made out of you. 20 seconds later, you're dreaming of a, a purple butterfly that's turning into a fairy. Yeah? That purple butterfly and turn, turning into a fairy the reality of that butterfly, the reality of that perception, of that impression, is you the dreamer. Yes? So the reality of the world body mind that we perceive, thoughts, bodily sensations, is consciousness. Yes? Is consciousness. Is part of the contemplation. So therefore, the whole impression of separation that I am here and the world is out there gets a big X on it. Right? But even though it gets a big, big X on it, what remains, possibly, possibly, is that I still feel that I'm here and the trees are there. So the contemplation continues. It's an unending contemplation. Then you ask yourself, well, where, where is this feeling? You go, okay, I feel that I'm here and the tree's out there. Then you go to, okay, what is this feeling? Because we've determined that the reality of the perception, meaning the reality of the tree, is consciousness. And it's at zero distance from consciousness. But still, now there is the feeling. So you go to the feeling, you investigate the feeling. Yes? You investigate the feeling. What is this feeling? Where is this feeling? What is it made of? This feeling is so stubborn, it's saying, I am here, sitting in this chair, and the tree is out there, I feel it. I feel it in my belly, I feel it in my chest, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. So you go to the feeling, you explore the feeling, you explore it. You say, okay, what is this feeling made of? Reveal yourself to me. Alibaba, open up your door and show me. Okay, show me. You speak so loudly that I am here and the trees are there. Show me, express yourself to me, arise, arise. You go to it, you continue to eat to contemplate and you would be amazed you would be amazed what reveals itself but you have to do the contemplation hmm? to conduct the contemplation right, when, I, when I get there is that is the divine the divine is within and that I don't even know how to handle that I mean it's like that's what seems to come through here when I'm getting to this, it's like, well, you just have to accept that. Mm -hmm. That's just going to have to be what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you how to handle that. Huh? Mm -hmm. You know how when a mother takes the baby in her arms, yeah? how does the baby handle that? How does a baby handle when mama takes the Loves baby it. in her arms? Surrender. 
Ah, it so was. beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's right. I get it. So yeah. beautiful. I get it. Yeah. Don't trouble yourself with how am I going to handle it? What do I do? Just, just be like the baby in mama's arms. Mm. 